This is an example of generative art. And it's made, exact, made possible by combining art with technology. And it's what I'll be talking about today. This seemingly complicated graphic was actually created by only 25 lines of Python code. And by the end of my sharing today, you will have a basic understanding on how these sort of graphics are created and how it became part of my career. So a little bit about myself first. Um, I have been a science guy my entire life. Ever since high school, I've been picking all the maths and science modules and subjects up until university, where I went to electronics engineering and eventually machine learning for my masters. So uh, some of you may be thinking, oh, who is this tech guy to talk to me about art today? Well, that's why I'm here. I'm here to share my stories, to show that art and tech may not be mutually exclusive as we may think, and that when they are multiplied together, the possibilities are endless. So like I've said, I've been a tech guy my entire life, um, but I've, always also, I've also always enjoyed art. I like drawing, I like looking at pieces of art, I liked going to art exhibitions. And at one point, I even considered art to be my career. So I've always had this struggle between whether to uh, define myself as a tech guy or an art person. And I'm sure all of us here have heard things like, oh, art doesn't pay as a career, or your art doesn't matter until you're dead. Well, there are some truth to these sayings. And indeed, a career in STEM does provide better financial stability. So very naturally, I went into tech for my career. But I never forgot about art as a passion. Until one day, I realized my passions can come together. That is when I visited Team Lab. That is where I discovered art tech, where engineering is used to create these super immersive and beautiful effects. That is when I realized art can be logical and tech can be colorful. So now that we have discovered art tech, so what actually is art tech? Well, generally speaking, uh, it's a very broad discipline, but it can be interpreted as applying technology in artistic expressions. That often creates a new and enhanced experience for your audience. And areas where art tech is applied, uh, so these are some examples. Um, First of all, we have AI art, then we have VR art, NFTs, of course, and generative art, which is the field that I will be talking about today. But before I go more deeply into that one, let us talk a little bit more about the other ones. So AI art, what is AI art? AI art is essentially where we use data and machine learning techniques to train an AI that is capable of ge uh, well, generating a piece of art entirely on its own based on the data that we fed it. One notable example of AI art is actually this piece that you can see, the portrait of Edmund Bellamy, created in 2018. What is special about this piece is that it was actually the first AI art that was auctioned at an astounding 432,000 US dollars. And interestingly, the creator of this AI actually used this equation or expression as the artist of this piece. What is this is actually the, what we call the objective function behind the AI that created this piece. Next up, we have VR and AR, which stands for virtual reality and augmented reality, which is where we use devices and 3D um, technology that allow us to not only paint in 3D, but also immerse ourselves and interact with the 3D environments that we have built. And obviously, as we know, its application extends way beyond, way beyond art and into fields like gaming and even medicine, where sometimes surgeons are now experimenting with remotely uh, doing surgery on the patient with their VR headsets. Next up, we have NFTs, of course, the hottest thing in town. Um, so what NFTs are, are essentially artworks that live on the blockchain. Originally, uh, it was designed just, to, just so that we can authenticate art pieces in a decentralized manner, so that they're by nature unique. And since their since uniqueness to these artworks, 
very often they are used for profile pictures and online identities nowadays, which is exactly why their value has been going way up recently. And last but certainly not least, we have generative art, which is where we use computer programs to create this structural yet mesmerizing effects using computer programs. Generative artists would create these effects like they would create softwares. They would write programs uh, in whatever language that they like. Obviously, there are languages that does one thing better than the other, but that's not the point. The point is that they use maps, logic, and computer programming to create visual effects. So, generative art began in the 1960s, and the person they can see right now is called Jorg Nies, and is one of the pioneers of generative art, who famously painted this piece, The Cubic Disarray, which was actually the, one of the first generative art pieces out there. The popularity of generative art quickly picked up, and in 1965, the first ever generative art exhibition was hosted in Germany, called Computer Graphique, which um, showcased even more of Georg Nies' work. Fast forward to modern day, modern, modern day, there has been Team Lab, which is uh, a company that's based in Japan, which is essentially um, a team of engineers who work with a team of artists that collaborated and created these super interactive and immersive exhibitions around the world. And even in Hong Kong, uh, just this last year actually, there has been a digital art fair showcasing more of these digital arts, NFTs, and even generative arts. From these, we can see that the popularity of art tech has actually taken off. And what I'm trying to say is that art tech enables a new artistic expression, whether these technologies are used alone or together. Ever since I've discovered generative art and art tech, I've been doing some self-learning and basically some experiment that I do for fun. And eventually, my, my skills slowly built up and I was able to create some work that I can truly call my own. So one of these ones. But then how did it become my career? It all began from my first graduate job. I began my career working for an AI company in the education department where I was creating AI courses and educational materials for young learners. Well, the stuff they were teaching was great, but the thing is, you know, AI and machine learning aren't particularly straightforward and easy for, for, for young learners, especially people who don't have a computer science background or at least some programming experiences. And beginner, beginner students often have a hard time learning to code or to program because logic is quite hard to visualize. And exercises are very often just copying and pasting codes given by the instructors. So that is a time where I realized the potential of using art tech and generative art as a channel to teach programming to beginners. Generative art makes learning to code more vibrant, more colorful, interactive, creative, and playful. Learners are able to visually see the changes that they have done to their program in the form of artwork. So on the side, I was creating an introductory programming course uh, that does exactly that. That uses generative art as a gateway for people to begin their journey in programming. Well, I, to begin, I started with some online classes, free online classes and focus groups for friends, just friends. But then it was received quite positively. So I started a company based on a demand. <laughs> um, a company that delivers these courses to schools. That gives students a true STEAM experience. And the fact is that students did actually show a greater level of interest and engagement during these classes. They were more creative with their exercises and were less afraid of making mistakes. Since, obviously, there is no right or wrong answers in art, only creativity, which often contradicts with science and maths. What you can see now is some of my students' examples. 
most of these students have never coded a single line of Python in their entire life. But despite this, and despite the fact that they were all given the same educational material that I was giving them, they were able to pour their own creativity into the work and create these unique pieces very quickly from a total beginner in programming. And that is how I found a commercial application for our tech. So what I'm going to show you guys now is that a very brief example of how actually maths is applied to drawing visual effects. Let's take a circle as an example. There are, many there are many definitions of a circle, and the one that I'm going to use today is that a circle is essentially 360 of these vertices joined together in a circular path and then closing the shape in the end. Very simple. What I'm saying is that you're essentially just drawing a circle. But there's one problem. I don't know what, where to put the vertices of the circle. Or in, the, or in other words, I don't know the position or coordinates of each vertex. So on this code snippet here, what I'm trying to do is that I'm, I'm trying to tell Python that I'm going to draw an enclosed shape. I'm going to draw 360 vertices. And I don't know the x and y coordinates. So that's our problem. That's our math problem, to find out x and y. So let's take this vertex as an example. Let's call that vertical distance y and the horizontal distance x. And next, let's join the center of the circle to the vertex. And let's call that r. Why is that called r? Because it turns out that distance is actually the radius of the circle, an r for radius. And that's one more piece of information. And that's the angle that, makes, uh, that, that r makes with x. Essentially, that's just a number that goes from 0 to 360, because I'm in incrementing uh, a, 1, every vertex. And we can extract the triangle out, because it just made a triangle. And where there are triangles, we can use trigonometry. And I'm sure all of us here have listened very patiently to our math teacher in high school. I'm sure this, what comes next, is not going to be too difficult. So R is our radius of choice. A is just the angle. So we know both R and A, and we don't know X and Y. So our problem is trying to use R and A to calculate X and Y. Using simple mathematics, cos equals to x over r and sine, equals to, sine a equals to y over r. And voila, plug these equations back into the code and we get a circle. Very simple mathematics, I'm sure. Yeah. So that's it. Up next, there are no more code. Um, it is about a tool that I built that allows all of us to create generative art without a single line of code. So what I'm doing here is that I'm trying to um, modify the values and the parameters that in, the, in the toolkit that changes how the graphic on the right-hand side looks. Right now, I'm, I'm changing the time dependency, which in this case changes how the shape changes with time. And the angle dependency really just, well, essentially changes how spiky the shape is. And when I combine the two, you get this sh shape-shifting flower sort of shape. And now I'm modifying color. And in computers, colors are defined by RGB. And after that, once I click the restart button, you will see this very mesmerizing flower effect that's similar to the one that you saw at the beginning of this sharing. And that is how we create artwork with data. If there's one thing for you guys to take away from my talk today, it is that don't think that you can only be good at either art or tech. And that when they're used together, the possibilities are limitless. Art makes tech colorful, and tech expands the boundaries for art. And in my case, I've even found an application for art tech in education. Who knows what you can build when you guys come into the, to the field. There has been an increasing demand for art tech talents recently, as we can see in the rising popularity in NFTs and VRs and so on. So for those of us who are interested in both art and tech, don't worry that you need to choose between them, because in the new world, we don't have to. Art tech has created this 
expanding space for people like us to apply our skills even commercially. And for people early in the journey, consider checking this space out. Because after all, our tech, why not? Thank you. <laughs>